Well, I guess let's start with uh, how was last night, the screening? Was I it- thought it was great. I, it was really fun. We had a super crowd, very enthusiastic. We had a great Q&A afterwards, and, and it was so great that we could uh, that Roger could be here with us and and uh, and share share the event. He, he's so he's so he's so great. He just he. He's very uh, eager and willing to do what it takes to help promote the film, and he's such a fan of the film, and he came up to me afterwards, he said, it's still working. <laughs> well, it hasn't changed. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Great night. I love that you're, the company that you sold the film to likes that you guys are going out and doing these types of festivals, trying to hook up with Shakespeare companies and, and theater-based performances. That's so rare. Uh, Tell me what about the fact that you guys continue to have life with this on the festival circuit. That's unheard of, really. It's it's kind of a nice little thing. Ghost lights, extra legs. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll have Jeff follow up, but uh, it's. Um, I think we all just want to build the biggest possible audience for our film, and we have kind of a unique audience. It's not a, it's not a mainstream film. It's the kind of film that. Uh, has um, a, a bit of a niche, a big niche, with the with people who are theatrically oriented, or have uh, are, are, are Shakespeare fans, or have been uh, involved with Shakespeare, and um, and so you know it resonates really well with them. And and people have told us that it could be used as a teaching tool, which is which is phenomenal for English teachers to take it out and, and help kids learn about Macbeth and and how Shakespeare. You know the, the the subtleties of what he does, and, and and that's wonderful that our film is considered in that way. So, so the idea in, in is that we can we can build an audience and continue to get out there, even uh, you know it, it's sort of a, a a a different kind of a way, and to align ourselves with Shakespeare organizations around the country, and and uh, and and get our own kind of theatrical release that way. I mean, do you want to follow up on that? Or? No, just you know that the. You know the 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 model, the theatrical model, is so challenged right now. And uh, even though we play well, it's just really hard. And I understand that to make sense for these small movies, even with big stars, to go out theatrically, like John was saying last night, ten poles. And the, so, given that reality, um, but it it does not allow for this ability to get your audience, get your find your audience which was traditionally theatrical. You splash it everywhere, where the, your eye. So, yeah, we're kind of going the other way. That, and and this, the Shakespeare companies have, you know, been very, very responsive so far. We'll see how that shapes their, or shakes out. <laughs> but but um, uh, we're optimistic. I mean, uh, nobody has yet set up the exact dates and events that we're going, but the Folger Shakespeare Library in D.C., um, which is the mothership of all things Shakespeare in the U.S. certainly and in the world, uh, the largest depository of Shakespearean material, um, they really like our movie and they're trying to come up with an event in June that would somehow wow. combine this education element with uh, programs they have and have a screening maybe at their Shakespeare theater. Anyway, and we've got that going on in L.A., we're working trying to get it in New York and uh, yeah. Portland, Oregon. And- yeah, different co- companies around the in Boston certainly too. Yeah, so. yeah. So we're so we we hope that if we can get it out there, then the movie won't just you know show up on your streaming service one day. And you go, what is that? That's that's yeah. our goal to not have that. Yeah. How well, yeah. surprising was it? Like with Austin, you guys won for Dark Matters. So it's not just obviously the Shakespeare's there, but you guys don't hit us over the head with it. It's very much uh, you could have changed the play, maybe not had the appeal of the you know the Scottish plays impact on superstition but I think like a theater troupe could watch this and say we do that regularly and we love that <laughs> yeah. your film translates to more than just one production or one type of element it, it's got so many great elements that's got to be you know y'all's writing what was it that you guys wanted to touch upon when you first started the project oh thank you <laughs> I, I appreciate that and um, uh, you know really the the inspiration of the film was was the superstitions of the theater, hence the title. Uh, and, and and you know, in, in picking a title like Ghostlight instead of you know the Scottish play or something that was fo- really focused on Macbeth, um, I think we did sort of 
open it up and 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 say that you know there, there are wonderful superstitions all across theater and and you know this is just one of them and and it's it, it, maybe it's one of the more famous ones and um, and so you know actors and 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 thespians are wonderful quirky <laughs> you know, neurotic creative people and i love them and and i'm one of them and and i just thought it'd be really fun to explore <clears throat> how they go about their lives how they think how, how they how they behave backstage <laughs> and what do they what do they really truly believe and a lot of them you know as Roger Bart said last night they really have these these ceremonies and these these beliefs and these superstitions and, and that they go through um, on a daily basis backstage yeah, he brought up in the interview one of the things was like whistling backstage on a on a musical is a no-no oh absolutely oh, and, a no-no um, I've got to ask, being able to, to gather this cast, both the veterans like Roger and Carol and then Shannon and the youngsters, um, that must have been a blessing to be on set with so many wonderful kind of actors that really got the material. And so many of them who've been prominently on stage, who know full well what's going on. Um, yeah, I mean, there was... Uh Certainly our leads all have quite a bit of stage experience. I mean, I think Tom Riley, he's out of the English tradition, but he's not as much theater, actually, although all English actors do. So, yes, um, it was a fantastic blend of, you know, of talent for us. And, and, and uh, the fun thing about creating something and then making it is once you bring those actors in and sprinkle those personalities over what you've given them as a template, it, it, it's kind of... It's kind of a remarkable. I mean, uh, and there are moments where the actor, obviously, you know, you've heard this before, do something and you go, huh, I didn't think. That's so good. So we had that. And what you get with really seasoned actors, of course, is is they just, most of them know how to give a, give you colors. They know how to how to say, you know, John will say, you know, I, I, I get under that or come back or whatever the language is and bang. So... That was really fun, and they were funny, and they're a funny group, and they they, they amused each other. So, and, and it was really fun to mix. What I would really enjoy was mixing the veteran actors with the younger, up and coming actors. A lot of them, a lot of whom were from Boston, uh, and uh, and it, it were some just great stories. Where um, Sheldon Best, for example, who plays you know one of the um, the, the the gay characters, and who, <laughs> who's just a, he's just a sweetheart of a guy, and he's, he's really talented. He came on set, and and he looked at. Well, for our table read, or it wasn't even on set yet. It was our table read, and he and he looked around. <laughs> his jaw sort of hit the floor. He had no idea who he's going to be working with on this film, and he told me the story afterwards. He said, "When I was a kid, I went to Broadway with my mom, and we saw You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, and I oh, watched wow. Roger Bart play Snoopy in You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, the, the role for which he won the Tony Award." And Sheldon said, "That's what inspired me to be an actor, <laughs> and here I am working with Roger now in this film." So it was that. That was really, really rewarding, yeah. With being able to travel around with it, has there been a, a theater or a movie experience that you've enjoyed showing the film at? Because you're not just, I mean, with the lore of what the film is, has there been that experience where you're like, oh, this is going to be perfect. They're going to get <laughs> what's the spookiness of this. <laughs> Well, you know, every every screening is different. Every venue is different. Every audience is different. And um, you know, we've been lucky enough to play around the country at a lot of different places. And uh, and and I can't really say that one. I mean, I think when we played in Woodstock, in New York, maybe was that that audience was um, from that very close to where the the film took place. You know, just a, a hundred miles away or so from Berkshires, and and so I think the the, the atmosphere, the venue there was probably had a, had a had a special ring to it for the for the people who saw the film. But it's just so fun to see different audiences respond, and you know, some of the consistent laughs that we get from screening to screening are are are, are wonderful. But then sometimes new stuff pops up, and and that's why I mean I I don't think I've missed a screening yet. I don't. A lot of filmmakers don't like to sit into the, in their screenings, but I. I love experiencing it with the audience and seeing how they how they respond. It's really fun. How do you think the southern audiences have enjoyed it compared to the northern audience or the northeast? Well, I think this audience here in Oxford uh, was particularly sharp in terms of understanding 
the, the superstition, the Shakespeare of it, and uh, and based on the questions we got in the Q and A, they were sh- they were on it. They they were they were riding along right with us, and they understood what was going on. And and, and uh, I got some wonderful compliments afterwards. So I, I I think this audience was terrific. And similarly in Austin, you know, the Texas audience was great. And you know, it's it's that's just you know that's the that's why we do what we do. You know, if we if these films didn't get seen by audiences. We, what are we doing it for? And 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 to share it with people and to be there with them when 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 they see it is just a real treat. You know, you guys were kind enough to. Well, Roger shared um, y'all's meeting um, <laughs> way back in the day. Do you mind sharing that story? I think that's so wonderful. <laughs> oh, I know. What it, it was so funny because uh, so we were both in college. We he his folks have a place on Martha's Vineyard. Yeah, in uh, Vineyard Haven, and and I was down there. Uh, I had worked at this restaurant called the Seafood Shanty the summer before, and it was just a cool place where they would get you know kids, college kids that were you know singers uh, and performers to come down, and and we would serve cocktails and bartend and and do a show every night, and uh, <laughs> you know we could do Broadway tunes, a lot of most it was a lot of Broadway stuff, a lot of. And we, but but I, mean, I sang an Elton John song, and I mean, you could do we could do whatever we wanted. That was the beauty of it. But so the second summer I'm down there, this this new kid that I hadn't met before, and he sort of had a mullet going and everything, and he was, a, but he was super talented. Oh my God, I couldn't believe how good he was. And he had sort of a rock and roll style to him. It wasn't really, you know, he wasn't a traditional Broadway or style singer. That, and I was really impressed with that. And I was, I was always, I was very. In, uh, I was blown away by his range. He had such a, a he had ability to hit high notes. It was like unbelievable. And, uh, and it turns out it's Roger Bart. <laughs> you know, and he's just a punk kid like the like the rest of us. And, and uh, but I do remember at the time uh, thinking, so this is the summer of 1981. Wow. Yeah. And I remember thinking, wow. If any of us is going to go somewhere with this, it's going to be Roger. And and sure enough, look and look at him he winning Tony it, yeah. Awards. <laughs> but um, no, it, that was such a real treat. So we spent you know ten weeks together that summer and really didn't stay in touch at all. And and but I I, I certainly followed his career and I was so proud of what he'd been able to accomplish. And um, and so when I had the opportunity to call him up about this this part, it's like. This is great, and he was—he was so great. He called me up. He goes, "John, is this you? <laughs> you serious?" I said, "Yeah." yeah. So cool. Yeah. Well, guys, how would um, folks be able to keep up with the film, following it online, and um, kind of—I know you guys are still working on what's next, but. Right. Um, yeah, just how can we keep in touch? Well, ghostlightmovie.com is our website. We keep it up. We keep it current. All the all the new screenings, the, the festivals that we're going to next, mm-hmm. any news about release dates, uh, we'll we'll keep up on uh, up on that. We we try to keep our our Instagram going pretty good. Uh, again, it's ghostlightmovie at ghostlightmovie is our Instagram. Follow us there, and um, you know, so you know, it'll be out there. It's gonna be. Yeah. It's it's coming this spring and, and summer is yeah, is when it's. It's going to start to be released, and um, you know which platform uh, first. I'm not quite sure. You know the Showtime deal is going to probably be starting in the fall. So, yeah, it's yeah. it's pretty cool. And, and, and we just urge, uh, well, you should see the movie. But even if you just like us, you should go to imdb.com and, and rate the movie there because it's a huge factor. People really check that out. It's kind of funny. Yeah. It's become a an influencer. All in the, people go, oh, well, it's got five stars. So anyway, if you see the movie, it'd be great to. If you like it, you know, so I definitely think they will, mm-hmm. and uh, I hope uh, the stuff in DC works out. That sounds so wonderful. Well, again, I, I, I speak out of school only because it's not nothing's in stone yet, but I'll, I I do confidently say they're enthusiastic. Whether or not one can then turn that into the the event, I don't know. But it, it's been kind of wonderful uh, just to expand on the, the you know we, it's we're not a Shakespeare movie about Shakespeare, but our strategy is. If we can get that word of mouth out there with our with our obviously most receptive, easy receptive audiences, then it, it'll cross pollinate hopefully and go to the other arcs of little horror, a little certainly comedy, you know. So that's our strategy. Stay tuned.